Okay, so uh, we just finished class and I'm going to continue on this example. So this is where we left off. We had identified the main parameters associated with bolt bearing, but we hadn't quite finished the computation. And the big thing to keep in mind is that the two cases have the same parameters, but that just happens to I'll be able to make that point a bit more clearly as we finish the example, but just think if any one of those parameters change, particularly either the plate thickness or the material grade, then while the computation would be the same, the results would be uh, fairly different. So let's go through and uh, do a bolt bearing computation with our um, main plate. So we'll do case one, which is the main plate. And so I've, uh, I'll go ahead and um, and list out our parameters again. So we have a bolt spacing of 2.75 inches and our edge distance in this case is one and a half inches. And we just got that from the, the, the schematic. We know our plate thickness is a half an inch and Fu is 58 KSI. And again, that's because uh, we're dealing with um, A36 steel. And so Again, I think you'll find this is very rote. So the first thing we do is we compute our LCE and our LCI. And so LCE is you know, our edge distance minus half of a hole diameter, which is 1.5 inches minus half of 15 sixteenths. And so that comes out to be 0 0.594. And then LCI is S minus DH, right? So that's 2.75 inches minus 15 sixteenths. Didn't quite need the parentheses there, but no big deal. Uh, that comes out to be 0 0.938 inches. So, you know, definitely, you know, if you want, you can, you ought to go through and repeat those calculations, make sure you're getting the, um, the same thing. All right. And so, Remember, our, our capacity per bolt is the minimum of 1.2 LCTFU or 2.4 uh, DBTFU. So I'll go ahead and do those calculations off to the side. So 1.2 LCTFU. And then because we have two different edge or uh, clear distances, so we'll have 1.2 LCI and 2.4 DBTFU. And so we got to just chug all this out. So so 1.2 times 0 0.594 inches, half of an inch, and 58 KSI. And so this one is 20.66. I'm doing this in Excel, by the way. So if um, your answers vary slightly, it might be because of rounding. So this is uh, 0 0.938. This comes out to be 32.63. And then 2.4, 7 eighths. And so 20.66 plus 32, or sorry, uh, I'm, not, I'm getting way ahead of myself because I'm trying to add the capacities up. Uh, let me go through one step at a time. So checking all this out, we get 60.9. Okay. And remember, our, capa our general capacity expression is the minimum of this and this. For bolt bearing. So therefore we have an RNE which is the minimum of these two right and so we're taking the minimum of 20.66 kips and 60.90 which it's, it's clear, it's 20.66, right? And then for, uh, let me scroll down a bit. 
so I got a little bit more room. For RNI, And so just the minimum of 32.63 and 60, which is 32.63. Okay, so there, there's our individual capacities. And then for our capacity of the whole connection, remember we have two edge bolts and two interior bolts. Um, so Rn is... 2RNE for the edge bolt plus 2RNI for the interior bolt, which is 2 times 20.66 plus 2. And so when you check that out, you get 106.58. And then what am I missing? There's one thing I'm forgetting and that's the fee value because uh, that's just a nominal capacity. Phi RN is phi is, sorry, phi, remember phi is 0 0.75. And so phi RN is, comes out to be 79, Point ninety three kips, so a little bit less than that. Um, that uh, case with the um, the bolt shear. Now. Um, I, there's a couple things bef uh, that I want to close out before I, I, I end this video. So let's let's review a couple of things. Let's let's start off by reviewing the computations. So all of the computations really revolved around these inputs right here. That and, and the bolt diameter. I guess I should say I should add that, but the bolt diameter was was the same for both. So think with those, you know, what did I do? So step one was basically compute these, which use those inputs. And then step two computed all of these, you know, which again, based on the inputs and based on, you know, the values from the, the, the previous step. And then compute this, compute this, and compute that. And, and again, everything followed from those inputs. So the, the I guess the overall first point I would make is, if those inputs changed, the process is exactly the same. It's just different numbers in the beginning. And so when we go back to the, uh, to the original uh, statement before we ended lecture, you know, we have the parameters with the main plate and the parameters with the splice plate. And what happened was when we went through and identified them, we got the same value. So the main plate, uh, you know, in the end when we assess it, they both had the same thickness, both had the same material grade, both had the same bolt spacing, both had the same edge distance. So what I will say is bolt bearing... for case two for the splice plates VRN is 79.93 kips and that's just by observation I don't need to do any math the only time I would need to do is if these inputs changed, which unfortunately they are, <laughs> I know you probably don't like this, but on your homework assignment, they are gonna be different. And I think they're gonna be pretty easy to identify that they're different just by observation. Because if you look at the problem in your homework assignment, just looking at the plate thicknesses, you know they're different, right? We have three quarter inch plates for the splice plates, and then we have flanges for the rolled shape. And so it's going to be different just because of the, the decimal value with your, your flange thicknesses. Also look at the steel grades. The splice plates use A36 steel. The rolled shape uses A992. So you're going to have to do that again. Okay. The only other item that I would ensure that you're taking care of, uh, uh, that you're 
taken care of properly is your bookkeeping. Uh, sometimes it's uh, there is a tendency to look at the splice and go, wait a minute, um, here's the, the connection detail. If I'm looking at the splice plates, well, aren't there eight bolts instead of four because you've got two splice plates? That's one way of dealing with it. The way that I dealt with it here is instead of considering eight bolts with a thickness of a quarter inch, I considered four bolts with a thickness of a half inch. It's the same thing. The only thing to ensure is that you're maintaining adequate bookkeeping. Your skills in note taking and the neatness and clarity of your calculations is definitely critical here. So just make sure that you're accounting for all the appropriate bolts in the connection and, and the math comes out pretty easily. So I, I think the math's easy, just making sure that you diagnose the con uh, connection uh, properly is what's important. So that's basically the connection uh, in a, uh, the, the bolt bearing calc in a nutshell. The one thing that I didn't do here was the connection layout uh, uh, parameters, which I, I'm not gonna go through that here. Let me go ahead and put this here because you all can access this um, notebook on Teams when uh, I'm done with this video, uh, students. Um, the, the connection layout requirements, uh, I'm not gonna do here, but they're no different than what we did in class last time. So here, I'll pull that example up. So if you remember, this was the example we did last time, and this was the layout requirements that we did. So we took the bolt diameter, and I, I think it act, the math will come out very, very similar. Um, you have your bolt spacing requirement, your edge distance requirements, so um, the, the values are very similar. So uh, just take S min and S max, LE min and LE max, and compare it against the actual uh, LE uh, and the S from the, the connection compared against the actual edge distance, the actual bolt spacing, and make sure your layout requirements are met. That's not going to change for, uh, for, for this problem as well. The only thing though, admittedly, that can be different is you might also have to do this twice um, because you might have different plate thicknesses. These are a function of the plate thicknesses, um, but usually what I do is I just use the, the minimum plate thickness because ultimately since these are, uh, uh, are trying to guard against corrosion uh, uh, issues and trying to facilitate construction, the easiest thing to do is just use the minimum thickness and just go with that. And by minimum thickness, I would mean actual minimum thickness. So going to this problem, because I'm interested in facilitating construction, I would evaluate the connection requirements based off a thickness of a quarter inch. So uh, because of the three, the actual physical plates there, the main plate and the splice plates, the actual minimum thickness I see is a quarter inch. So maybe we'll go, let's go ahead and do the, uh, the connection layout requirements just to make sure that, that we're good with that. So we're going to use a bolt diameter of 7 eighths of an inch and let's use T which is T minimum which is a quarter inch. And again because if I'm worried about corrosion or, or whatnot I don't care about you know some some mathematical trick that we're using to make the math easier. It's okay what is the actual minimum thickness of a piece of steel out in the field because I'm trying to make sure it doesn't rust. So we're going to go with a quarter inch. So our S min is eight thirds of the bolt diameter, so eight thirds of seven eighths of an inch, which is 2.67 inches S max. Remember, S max is the minimum of 14 T or seven inches, which is the minimum of 14 times, in this case, a quarter or seven inches, and I think you can, by observation, see that that top one's gonna to govern. So 14 divided by four is three and a half inches. So we actually have a pretty tight bolt spacing issue. It's gotta be between 2.67 and three and a half. And so if you remember from this problem, if you remember from this problem, S was 2.75 inches. So we met our bolt spacing limitation. It was just right in the middle there. And as for S, uh, the edge distance, so we have LE min and LE max. 
Ellie Min, we have to look up. So we look that up from table J3.2. Um, so, or sorry, not, not J3.2, J3.4, sorry. So if I operate my webcam, so that is, you know, this table right here, table J3.4. So that's on 16.1-132, so out here in the back part of the spec. And for 7 8 inch diameter bolts, uh, that is 1 and an eighth. So, put that reference there. And LE max is um, the minimum 12T and 6 inches. So, the minimum. And so that's three inches. So we got to be between one and an eighth and three inches. And for this problem, the LE, the edge distance was actually one and a half. So we met our layout requirements. All right. So to summarize the problem, the layout requirements were met. And as for the capacity, so we've got three numbers to consider. We've got, if we scroll up, we've got our bolt shear capacity, which was 194.8, or our two capacities for bolt bearing, which are right here. Now, for this problem, they happen to be the same. They might not be, you know, if we've got different thicknesses, but in this case, they were. And they're both 79.73. So here, we know our layout requirements are met. What is the capacity of this section? It is 79 point, we'll just say 79.9 kips. Boom, and there's your answer. So we know the capacity and we know the layout requirements are met. What we're gonna do next time is, we've talked about bolted connection analysis, it's finally time to learn how to design bolted connections. And you could probably guess how we're gonna do it. It's that easy. And um, we will talk about that on Friday. So I'm going to stop this and I'll post this soon.